before you begin, make sure that you have a copy of the data on the Jamestown population. You're going to need this to enter the data into your spreadsheet. Once you have that, then we're going to look for this Apple Numbers app, which is the green one right here. The reason why we decided to use the spreadsheet Apple Numbers is because it works really well with Apple Keynote, which is the app next to it here. And that's what we're going to use to make our infograph. So go ahead and open numbers. And you'll see that I have a lot of numbers files here, a lot of spreadsheet files. And I've named them so that I can easily find a file that I'm looking for. For us, we're going to go ahead and tap on the plus sign to create a new spreadsheet. And then we're going to tap on blank. We're going to create a spreadsheet from scratch. The first thing I would do is go up and tap on the word blank here and tap on rename, use the backspace key and delete those and then name it Jamestown population. You can name it whatever you want, but that's what shows up when you first open numbers and if you want to find the file, then you need to name the file something that you'll recognize. All right, so here we are. I would now go ahead and tap on table one and delete that and name that Jamestown population also. They don't have to match. What you want here is the name of what your table is. And that just makes sense to me, Jamestown population. Now what you want to do is you want to tap on column A and then row one. So that's a cell you're in, A1. And tap on it until the keyboard shows up and you want to type in date. So that's the column header is going to be date. And then the column header for the next column, column B is going to be population. So you can see this right on the table that you're working from. And then the third column is reason. Now this one is not that important for this project. We're not going to use it in the infograph, but it completes the table. So you're welcome to go ahead and put it in. Now let's tap on column A, row two. So we're in cell A2 and we wanna put in the date. So you go to number, five slash 1607, right? And then you could either hit return or tap on another cell. So let me go ahead and hit return. That'll bring us down. And you'll see that the date changed. So what you wanna do is, let's go ahead and tap on it. And you see that little blue dot you can drag that down. So go ahead and drag it down to the bottom here to 22. So now what we've done is we've highlighted all of these cells, cells A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, and you can see it's um, there's a blue box around it. If you want to change the format of the way those cells look, you just select it and then you tap on this paintbrush at the top. And that allows you to change the way the table looks, the cell, format, and arrange. And what we want is format. And for this, we want to change the cell so it's a date and time. Normally everything is what's called automatic and it takes its best guess, but we want to make sure that they know this is a date and time. So now we've checked that off. And then if you tap on the I, it'll let you change it to exactly the format that you want. And the difficulty in 507 is that you don't know what year it really is. It could be 2007, which was just a few years ago. It could be 1807, but what it is is it's 1607. So it's important that we are able to identify that this was a long time ago, 1607. 
and the month is important. So let's go ahead and pick this, this one. May 1607. That's pretty good. We don't have the day, so it doesn't make any sense to try and figure that out. And then if you scroll up, we don't need a time, so just make sure that that's on none. Now you can just tap in a cell, and let's see if we tap in it until the keyboard comes up. So now that it knows it's a date, it gives you a different keyboard, 10 slash 1608, and then you can hit next, and it'll automatically bring you to the next cell. And then you can go six slash 1609, next. Anyway, so you would continue until you fill in the rest of the date. When you're done, you can tap on column B, row two, and you can type in 105, next. 200 next and you can go all the way down and then under reasons so this should be text and it thinks it's date so what you can do here is you can tap on the C column you can go to the paintbrush and you can say all the way at the bottom text so that forces those cells to be text and now when you tap in it you should get the keyboard and you can type in first arrivals and then next one you can type new arrivals so you want to do that until the whole table is complete so once you finish your spreadsheet you can tap on the keyboard icon down here to get rid of it and then you can just scroll down by using your finger and pulling down on the screen and you can see your entire table and just double check that you've entered everything correctly this is really important for the rest of the project to work out to clean things up a little bit you can see that along the top here where it tells you column a b c d e f g you'll see two vertical lines that look like kind of a pause uh, symbol. If you put your finger on that and you drag it to the left, you can get rid of some of the columns just to clean it up. We don't need those. And then you can see it at the bottom of the rows. There's something that looks like an equal sign and you can push up there until you get to the bottom. And at this point, you're finished with this step of the project. If you tap on spreadsheets, you'll see your Jamestown population spreadsheet there. If you ever need to get back to it, you can tap on it and you can see it. And as you can see, it saves automatically as you make changes. You don't have to go and save it again. One thing to note is that if you make a mistake, there's an undo button at the top and you can tap on that and see how it got rid of the last thing that you did. If I hit undo again, it would get rid of that. 